Welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show, where we inspire and empower you to embrace the changes that come with this exciting phase of life. I'm your host, Wendy Valentine, and today we have a special guest who's here to share her unique journey and passion for healthy living. Our guest today is Sina Wheeler, a remarkable woman who is part of a fifth generation fishing family and the co-founder of Sina C. Sina C, Sina C. <laughs> I like how that sounds. C2C is a fantastic company that brings wild Alaskan seafood directly to your door, ensuring you get the freshest and most nutritious fish possible. C2C has been featured in Food & Wine, Epicurious, Marie Forleo, one of my fave women out there, and Seattle Magazine. Cena is not only passionate about sustainability and helping busy families eat healthier, but she's also dedicated to educating people about the health boosting benefits of wild fish. With a master's degree in nutrition and food science, specializing in quantifying omega-3s in fish and determining preferred handling practices for premium quality, Sina brings a wealth of knowledge to the table, literally. Together with her husband, Rich, Sina runs this amazing family business, spending part of the year in Alaska and enjoying the flexibility to flexibility to watch her children participate in their school sports. And of course, she loves eating and cooking fish just like me. So whether you're a seafood lover or just curious about incorporating more nutritious options into your diet, diet, I'll try to talk better today. You will love today's episode. Let's go deep diving into the world of wild Alaskan seafood. Please well, welcome Tina Wheeler to the show. Da, da, da. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Thank you. It's worth it. I'm just, if I just left now, I'd be like, wow, that was worth it. I appreciate that. I like when you hear your own bio being read, you're like, damn, who wow. is that woman? She's awesome. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my gosh. I am so glad that you're here. It's funny because, and I'm trying to think of the name of the agency that sent your info to me to have you on the show. Oh, um, um Julie, Julie Fry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. She's so sweet. And I She's remember the best. first time it came across. I mean, I, I get a ton of requests for people that want to be on the show, which is awesome. And I always go through them like, okay, how can this apply to my audience? I was like, fish, fish, hmm, fish. I was like, <laughs> But I thought, you know what? I'm like, I am a huge promoter of eating fish because it's so good for you and it's so healthy for you. So I was like, heck yes, let's be on the show and let's talk about some fish. So awesome. it, yes. And you know what? I was telling you before uh, we hit record, I recently watched, there's two shows on Netflix that I recommend. Oh, look at all the balloons in the screen. I don't know where this Ooh, is. I You're watching on YouTube. All of a sudden, a bunch of... Balloons came onto the screen just to celebrate the two documentaries I watched. Anyways, How to Live to 100, uh, which is about the Blue Zones, people that live to 100 years old. Love uh, that one. Yeah. And the other one was, oh, you are what you eat. I love and that one too. That. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was an eye opener for me. So yeah, if you haven't watched either one of those documentaries, uh, I highly recommend those but the you are what you eat mm -hmm. oh my gosh talks about the foods especially here in the united states and fish specifically and it was like wow just seeing some of these fish that were in in the farm fish oh, which yeah. i've always known to steer away from farmed fish right i always choose wild fish so right. Tell the audience a little bit about the difference between the two, farm well, fish versus wild caught. Farm versus wild, absolutely. Oh. You know, I love that documentary. If you guys haven't seen it, definitely watch it. And and of course, I love the deep dive. I mean, they, they deep dove. I, I just love the setup. Like they went into kind of the, the CAFO cow versus the regenerative grass-fed beef, you know, that kind of thing. And so it was really cool. And then with the fish, I will say they did the best job I've seen of people really diving into farm fish because I'm kind of feel like I've been saying this, but, but people kind of go, Oh, what farm fish is bad. Like I thought it was all these things because it can be labeled as sustainable and organic and things like that. And it's just like, there's so many missed messages about the farm, but I will say, first off, I felt a little bit like 
they also gave like two options like okay here's wild fish that's overfished too bad or you can choose farm fish and i felt like hey wait guys whoa there's a third option here sustainably caught wild fish you know they showed the big um it's funny cuz they were talking about salmon and and only a fisherman would notice they showed um you know videos of overfishing with these big huge boats and overfished and that's not how you catch salmon so the salmon that we catch in the united states you know mm. like alaskan salmon is the is the biggest run in the united states or in the world on the planet no so i didn't know that interesting okay so in alaska it's been fished sustainably from the beginning so mm. it's the biggest wild run and it's hmm. still fish sustainably. So a couple of years ago, Bristol Bay, which is like the, the biggest run in Alaska, which is the biggest, you know, fishery in the world, had the biggest, largest return of salmon, the most amount of salmon returning ever recorded. Wow. In the history of the fishery. And it's like, and that's American fishing with laws, regulations, sustainability. And I, I felt like, wait a second, they talked about farm salmon. And if you talk about wild caught salmon, you're showing these are small boats. This yeah. is one or two people. These are family, family fishing like we are. We're not actually that abnormal in the world of small boat salmon fishing. And it's like, let's talk about it. This, this yeah. wild caught salmon is, is caught in, in the States. We have laws and regulations and things like that. So I just felt like, Hey, there's a third option, mm -hmm. you know, um, wild and sustainable. It doesn't have to be, um, overfished and it doesn't have to be wild. So I just, that's me yeah. on my soapbox. <laughs> what, what do you mean by overfish? What do you mean by that? So I just feel like, you know, sometimes those two points is like, well, your choices are wild or I'm sorry, farmed or wild. And then the wild, they just, they call overfished wild or something. That's mm -hmm. kind of the way I felt like they talked about it in that section. And it's like, there are some species in the world that are overfished that mm -hmm. um, should maybe be avoided. Most of them are caught not in the United States because we have um, sustainable, like very, very tightly regulated. So um, I, I, you know, I'm not even sure what tilapia, sea bass, I mean, those might be farmed, but like there's some types of fish that are caught in international waters that might be overfished, that there needs to be some oversight and some regulatory. And yes. so there are big problems that need to be solved. Most of those really big problems are illegal fishing yes. and going on in international waters. And I think we could spot, shine more of a spotlight on, you know, our domestic legal <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fishing, fishing that yeah. happens uh, on small boats by our own American fishing families, if that makes yeah, sense, you know. Exactly. It's kind of like you hear all about this, like supporting small businesses. It's like, right. why are we supporting the small fishermen out there that is like really out there on the sea catching the right. fish? Right. So how, okay. I want to ask you a really silly question. So is he literally, is your, your, is your hubby the only one or do you have other fishermen too? We have other fishermen too. So we know right. fishermen that we know and trust up there. Yeah. And are they catching it with a good no old pulls. plastic? <laughs> <laughs> Not like how I caught them. I went, went fishing in Oregon recently. I was like, uh, although like I had a hard time with the, the boat going back and forth. I was oh, like, yeah. God, get me off of this thing. I don't care. But I did catch a ton of fish and it was so much fun. It was so cool. Um, but yeah, so are they doing it with nets? Are they doing it with like a good old fishing pole? How do they actually do it? <laughs> They're doing it with nets. So it's called gill netting. And so it's a, it's a boat for, for Copper River, especially. So Copper River is one river in Alaska and, and it happens to have the best salmon. So, you know, side note, highest omega threes, all the best salmon. And it is, um, you catch salmon as they return to the river and um this area i mean people might imagine like a river with a net across it but this is 300 miles of ocean beach meeting sandbars and then this whole delta um situation it's it's just like it's incredible and it's in alaska i mean it's pristine there's no roads there's nobody there 
yeah. and um, they're fishing with gill nets. So these boats are uh, for the Copper River. They're they're regulated. They can't be over like forty three feet, but mostly they're they're fished with one or two guys. So my husband Rich fishes by himself mostly. If it's going to be like the peak time, he might bring an extra guy, and then. Uh, when we bring the family up, we have a family of five on the boat uh, that we kind of pack onto the boat, which is a whole nother. It's like, <laughs> it's like living, it's like camper size, you know, the yeah. whole situation, yeah, but where you can't go that. outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can relate to the whole camper thing, you know? <laughs> right. oh it's like a big road trip, but outside is like just on deck. <laughs> yeah. So- but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I should say just to finish, cause I'm like, oh, yeah. I can just go on little details, but it's a gill net and it has, um, holes and the holes are targeted. So they have different nets that go different depths and the different net sides so they can target each species and size. And so there's a lot of targeting that goes on with those nets and it's incredible how targeted the whole thing is. They're catching just salmon in those nets and salmon of a particular size, even. Yeah. And the water is, I'm sure, clean water, which makes a huge difference. You see some of the, just even on that documentary where the water is nasty and the, the fish are deformed. It's so gross. Yeah. That's but, you. Oh gosh. Um, but I tell you what, yeah, no coincidence that when I watched the documentary is happened to be when you guys reached out to me to be on the show. <laughs> I was like, oh yes, we're having them on the show. But, <laughs> and it was so sweet because you guys sent me a box of fish and I'm not kidding you when I tell you this, and I've eaten a lot of fish in my 51 years of life. It is, it was the best salmon I have ever had in my life. Yes. And so <laughs> it was so pretty. Like I almost like it was so pretty. I didn't want to eat it because it was, it was that perfect, like, well, I happened to be wearing coral today, but it was like a, mm-hmm. um, it was like an, it was like this pretty orange, like the way it's supposed to be. The color is outstanding. Yeah. I mean, when people see it, yeah, uh, we have people all the time on the internet saying, "Oh, you, oh, those are um, like our photos are um, photoshopped." Yeah, like they're photoshop- <laughs> and they're not. I know exactly. You go to their website; it's cinese.com or cinese.com, right? Yeah, s e n a s e a dot com. But yes, That's right. You go to their website, and yeah, the pictures are amazing, but they're not photoshopped. Like when you get, that's what it looks like when you get the salmon. And yeah. it, and you know what? It did not have that fishy taste. Right. It tasted. Actually, my boyfriend even said he's like, "Oh my god, I think this is the first time I've really tasted salmon," because the, all the other salmon that we've had before wasn't really true salmon. It's really incredible. And people tell me, you uh, know, they're like, it didn't smell like when you pull it out of the packages, it smell uh, fresh like the ocean. Yeah. You know, it's 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 not a. Uh, it's it's fresh and clean. It tastes like salmon. <laughs> yeah. And then I did have two. Um, there was a white fish that I had too that was amazing. Maybe it was was it halibut? Just for the halibut? No. I'm trying to um, think. Um, and there was two. I still was have probably people. halibut yeah. and then the black cod or sable oh, fish. Oh yes, yes, That's black incredible cod. too. So I still have two pieces of fish left in the freezer on purpose because I was like, I'm gonna cook this on Instagram, you know, next week or something like that. So I can show you guys after this airs, but, um, it, no, no joke. Like that fish is so good. So let's talk about benefits, health benefits of eating fish. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, one of my favorite topics. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Fish has is, I mean, high omega threes is the big thing, right? I did a post just the other day because also, they have, it has incredible protein. I mean, you look, a piece of salmon has over 20 grams of proteins. And, yeah. and like my husband, looked, and this was a couple months ago, he, he's like, see, now look at this, you know, did you know that it has over 20 grams of protein? I'm like, Rich, I mean, am uh, I doing a horrible job? Like how, how would you think? I don't know the protein content of the salmon. You're like, uh, <laughs> duh. Like, I mean, you I, go back to catching the fish. I'm, I'm, I'm like, you- but yes you know really high protein and it's a clean protein this this um fish go in alaska where it's pristine waters they go out in the ocean they feed themselves what they're supposed to feed and they come back with this high omega-3s high protein zero carbs i mean it's like you can't even you couldn't invent a healthier food 
high yep. protein, zero carbs. The fat in it is omega threes, which makes it um, taste good. The, it's like beef where the higher the fat, the kind of the better it tastes. Oh. It, it stays moist and it has that good flavor. And then, oh. you know, it's unsaturated omega three. So it also makes it healthier. So any, um, you know, the higher the fat, the better it tastes, the better it is for you. And that's really why the Copper River salmon that you had is yeah. like the top of the top. So that's mm -hmm. what makes it kind of like the best on the planet. I never thought about that before. So like the omega, it, like relating it to like fat and beef, right? Mm -hmm. Like the more, mm -hmm. more fat there is, it's even tastier. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you get the, the top quality. I mean, fat. as you go up to Wagyu beef and stuff like that, it's the extreme fat content that's really making this like premium quality. And our premium of the all premium is our Copper River King. And it just, it has the highest fat content. I mean, it is so buttery and moist. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible. I mean, you got the Copper River sockeye. That's our bread and butter. That's what we eat year round too. But the King is like, it's only available when it's available. And it's like the Wagyu beef of, mm -hmm. of beef, you know, it's just like, oh my goodness. And that's the omega threes. And then it's the benefit of like, it, and it's great has high omega threes. Yeah. I mean, and that, as I know, is good for your, your hair, your skin, your heart. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, I even take a separate omega also, mm -hmm. which and, is made out of fish. And it's like the more, the merrier, you know, you yes. can't over like for one, we can't make it in our bodies. So you have to have it. And if you take an omega three, I'm like, people ask me, should I take an omega three? Should I eat fish? I'm like, do both eat the fish. It, like I said, it's the higher protein. It's, it's, it's got everything. And if you take a supplement, take a supplement too, because it's not going to hurt you to have more, oh. your body needs it. And, and really the, the more the merrier. I printed off a whole list because I can't even remember all the things. <laughs> yeah, there is so much. Well, and going back to the, how to live to a hundred, the Netflix series, Dan Butner in the blue zones, that is, there was nine elements um, that every, they all had in common of the people that lived in the blue zones, living until a hundred years old. And one of them was of course eating fish. Mm -hmm. So, and they were, you know, they mainly have, um, it's a plant-based diet, but then they have fish, they have red meat periodically, not mm -hmm. a lot. Um, so no lot, not a lot of acidity. And that's really like, when I think about that, like with diet, I look at like the alkalinity and the acidity, right. And fish is like towards the alkal, the alkaline side and disease cannot grow in an alkaline body. I don't know if anybody knows that, but it's true. So I like you that. keep your, yeah, you keep your pH level. I think it's like 7.2 or something like that. Um, so the more acidic you are, then the higher that goes. So for me, like if I feel, if I feel inflamed or I feel like I'm getting sick, I, I add more alkaline foods to my diet, more plant-based, more fish and as many, and I love every, everyone that I interview on the show and about diet and exercise and menopause and perimenopause. Right. And really I feel like, especially with society and social media and all the fads that are out there. I always say, I'm like, just go back to the basics. Exactly. I feel like, you know, like, I feel like yeah. we're trying to reinvent the human body. The human body is what it is. Just like we're going to find some hack and it's like the hack yeah. is do the real, the basics. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like you said earlier about the salmon that goes out there and he's in the, in the, um, in the river and he's eating what he's supposed to eat as a fish. Well, human beings are supposed to eat what human beings eat, right? Yeah, like yeah. Just go, don't overthink it. Don't stress about it. Eat your fishies, eat your veggies, you know, like don't, you don't have to like, it, there's no perfect science to it really. And I feel like we've all kind of lost track of that. That's why those people have lived so healthy and yeah. hundred years old. I agree. And how you feel, yeah. you know, when, when yeah. we travel or like, just like you were saying, when you like, when we travel or I feel off balance, I cook a fish dinner. I, I cook a big filet with, and I cook with tons of veggies and I, I just sit down to a home cooked meal, lots of veggies, fish. And I'm just like, ah, I, I'm home. I'm balanced. Like I I'm okay now. And like, I never thought of it on the pH scale, but yeah, probably that's it too. You know, if I've eaten out a bit or traveling, it's just like, I just need to come home. I need to eat a, home-cooked meal. <laughs> yeah. 
more processed foods or more acidic coffees, liquor, alcohol, like all of that stuff is more on the acidic side. So it's like, yeah, if you ever are not feeling well, then, or if you just feel, or if you want to even like just drop a few pounds, just become more alkaline, more veggies, more fish, more water and herbal teas. It's really, really simple if you think about right. it. Yeah. Um. But, you know, so here's the thing too. I can remember like... I feel like even like drinking tea, right? How it's kind of like a ceremonial type of thing. Mm -hmm. And actually, you're talking about the fish, like just grilling fish. And it sounds really corny. But my first year, um, I was a solo RVer. And one of my favorite things is that after I would drive somewhere and I'd get set up, like say, let's, we'll, we'll just imagine I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I've got the RV all set up and like, the sun is going down like, Ooh, what am I going to make for dinner for myself? You know? And so many people would ask me like, Wendy, were you lonely? I'm like, no, I wasn't. I had a blast. And I loved, I would, I had my grill, I had my little mm -hmm. Coleman grill out there and I would grill some fresh fish and I would grill some asparagus. And the point in all this is like fish, cooking fish is super simple. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's easier than chicken and beef and even veggies sometimes. And faster. Yes. And if it's good fish, like you don't have to do a whole lot to it. Yeah. Put a little salt and pepper and lemon on there and call it a day. And it's done in 10 minutes. It's like, yeah, so it, that, that's the thing. And I, I work hard to let people know, like, that's a big thing that we talk about is like, just to feel confident with fish. I mean, for so, a lot of people, there's just a lack of confidence and like, what am I going to do with it? And what about this? And what about that? And I just feel like for me, I, I cook fish on those days when I'm like, oh, great. What am I going to cook for dinner? You know, I didn't yeah. make a plan. I don't have anything. And I always have some of our fish in our freezer. Of course I can pull it out and put it in cold water in the it's their individual yep. vacuum sealed in the portions while mm -hmm. I'm making the rice and it's ready to go. So for me, it's like, it's as fast as like grabbing out the, the chicken nuggets and being like, well, you know, here we go. Exactly. I can defrost it and cook it that fast. And it cooks for, you know, 12, 15 minutes and it's, and just doing it, you get that confidence. And then it's like, oh yeah, I, this is easy and it's delicious. And that, and I feel good after a fish yep. meal. Yeah. It's not heavy. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice and light. You digest it easily. And I mean, as far as like, okay, anybody out there again, like if you're wanting to lose a few pounds or something like that. Fish is great because of the high protein and you don't yeah. have all the carbs and the starches and all that. And I, I think of it, you know, even like you, like when you just imagine, you just said that scene, right. You you're cooking mm -hmm. the food, just reminding me like, that's kind of how I feel self-care. It doesn't have to be like a spa day. It doesn't have to be something yeah. fancy or expensive. It can just be going like, what do I need? And what is my body asking for? And for me that like, like a fish and veggie meal is just like, that's taking care of myself. It tastes good. It feels good. It feels right. That's, that's going to um, go way further than I've retrained myself. Cause it used to be like, Oh, I deserve you know, a chocolate milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I worked really hard. I deserve it. And now I'm like, I deserve somebody, me cooking myself a really nice meal. <laughs> That's good. For, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you truly are, you are what you eat and you are how you treat yourself. Right. So, and right. I would have to say too, the food is even how it is treated. Yeah. Because yeah. think about like some of these animals and how they're just with full of chemicals and treated like crap and then they kill them and then they put them basically in a little package and then we take it home and we eat it. It's like, right. Oh. And how, you know, it's just like, there's a disconnect there that we have to reconnect and, yes. <laughs> and, I know. and realize We've had taken great pride and, you know, we have the kids on the boat since they've been young that my, yep. our kids are teenagers. Now I still have pictures of them on the website that are very cute and small, but Aww. they've been coming up with us on the boat and we've taken so much pride in just having them be a part of respectful harvesting of the fish and then, you know, eating the fish and being grateful for that. And, and it can be such a full, full circle experience when mm -hmm. you do it in a connected way. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, there's love there. I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, I feel like when you put, when you put the love into how you're 
getting the food, whether it's like the, the farmers or the fishermen, right. right. And then how you're preparing the food and how you're sitting down. And I have to remind myself too, like I'm a busy woman, but like, I have to, like, when I sit down to eat, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm yeah. going to appreciate it. And that does a lot just for your well being. Yeah. Sitting not, down like, to eat. Scarfing your food and just, you know, like there's no respect for the food. Right. Right. Um, yeah. We've taken, um, for years we worked the farmer's market. So having the kids on the boat and they see the whole process and then we'd come home and we go, and then they come with me to the farmer's markets and that's work. And looking around, you know, at the farmers that have harvested their crop that morning, brought it to the market. I mean, they are working so hard. I tell the kids, you know, I mean, it, it was just fascinating to be right in the middle of it. I always told them, you want to see the hardest working people. It is right here at the farmer's <laughs> market. <laughs> and it's, those are the farmers and they're farming and then they're coming and they're talking about it, but we would trade for produce and there's nothing comparable than eating a meal that is from with produce that, you know, who the farmer was and all of that connection. And then they love to trade for fish. So it was just like, we could just come home with as many vegetables as we could carry and have these fabulous meals. And, it, and it's just, it's really it, there's that connection, but then there's the more nutrients too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the things I loved when I, when I received your fish is that it had recipes in there, had little recipe cards, and those are great. I mean, there go the balloons again on my screen. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the balloons on the that screen. So funny. Like, <laughs> but anyways, yes, no, that is nice. So if you're, if, someone out there is kind of intimidated by, you know, how to cook fish. Like you guys yeah. provide some recipes. Do you ever, do you have a cookbook or do you, you have. Don't yeah, you have we a have a, an online uh, digital cookbook. So it has um, recipes of how we like to cook the fish. So when I was working the farmer's market for years and years, I found as I'm talking to people, a lot of people, they want to know how we caught the fish, but they want to know how we handle it, how we cook it. And they're like, no, I don't want to know how to cook it. I want to know how you cook it because yeah being a multi-generational fishing family they're like no how do you do it and so we have a downloadable cookbook for you know if people sign up for the email they get they get that and it's just like we just want to give everybody the tools because mm -hmm. uh, just take all the the boundaries away you know all the blockades oh i don't know what to do with it i don't know how to cook it you know just take all that away make it easy it's so easy. I love, um, I don't know. I was just trying to think of like, do I like sauteing, grilling or, um, cooking it in the oven? I think I, I like, I don't know. for me, it depends on the time of year. Cause it, you know, yeah. summer, I love to grill and it's so funny, but salmon especially is like sockeye is the spring fish. It's the bright red spring, um, salmon and is so good on the grill. It's really good with spring vegetables, like asparagus and, you know, it's so fresh and so flavorful. And then you have coho in the fall and coho is, is a uh, milder, it's more buttery. It's a milder flavor, but it works really well in recipes, like takes on the flavor of the sauce. Like I might saute it and, or, um, I do more like saucy kind yeah. of mm, spinach and zucchini that are artichoke kind of saucy, bubbly, you know, it's cooking right in the sauce. And so it's, it's fun. I think to kind of, I do it all different. And in the winter, I do a lot of like, what I kind of call indoor grilling. I just like put it under the broiler, you know? Yes. And so easy. So oh easy. It's, it's basically, I mean, there's an air fryer too, and you can air fry fish. I've done it. I have a family of five. So I, for me, it'd be batches, but I just put it under the broiler and I feel like, well, I can just do the whole, <laughs> I do a lot of sheet tray baking in the winter time is like I will do a sheet pan of veggies another sheet pan of veggies a sheet pan of the fish just put it all in there you know and just kind of rotate it out whatever's done I like to do it a different sheet per vegetable so I can pull it out when it's done or leave this one in a little bit longer but so is it done by subscription or can you buy them individually how does that work we do both we like to keep it easy. Um, you know, I understand people want to kind of try it and get it one time. And, and just like the idea of like getting your fish shipped in the mail <laughs> to your door, you know, how does all that work? And then we do have a subscription program that's meant to be super simple and work with you. So you can get it every, 
every one, two, or three months. You can change the variety, what type of species. We have a cool um, seasonal variety where it's just like, you let us know if you want salmon, whitefish, or both. And then we will just give you what's in season. So in spring, you'll get the Copper River sockeye. It's like, I know you want this. This is the best. It's in season. As we move through the seasons, we'll give you Copper River coho. In the winter, it lets us kind of give you what we have more of because every year we don't know what species is going to come in more or less. So it allows us to be kind of tap into the sustainability and, and the availability of with what we're working with. So I love that one. I love it when people subscribe to the seasonal subscription, let us, let us do the hard work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Well, let's see today. Well, when this airs, it'll be April 1st. So, so now is like the, the salmon season. In May. So we're really getting yeah. ready for it. It's, it's, um, uh, we have, we have, every, we have salmon. It's everything will start selling out here as we get ready for the new season. And every year, I don't know how we do it, but it, it kind of, you know, like say we have different amounts because we don't know how big a run will be, you know, come in strong or not. So we just kind of work with it. And this time of year, we're kind of selling out of species, we have Copper River sockeye right now, but we won't for long. And then in May, it's a big deal when the when the Copper River opens because it's the first wild salmon run on the planet. Wow. Um, they're the first to spawn. So it's not our time frame. It's the salmon. You know, they're the first to return. And so it's the first commercial fishery that's open. The whole world is ready for fresh fish, you know, wow. fresh wild fish. So it's a really big deal. Yeah. It's so important. I'm off to say again, of you got to be careful what you buy. And I love Whole Foods, y'all, but Whole Foods, especially like even if you go to the fish department right there and even behind the glass where you're thinking like, this has got to be the best, best fish ever. Now, if you look closely, yeah. it'll say that they're farm raised fish. Yeah. And, and that is, it, you know, there's a lot of little tricks and it, I would like to, it to be easy. So I don't like to overwhelm people, but like Atlantic salmon, that's a code word for farm because they don't commercially fish wild Atlantic salmon anymore. So Atlantic salmon equals farm salmon and uh, just oh, looking for those little things. Yeah. What I do like to tell people, you know, we catch in Alaska and um, they don't pay me extra to say this stuff, but you know, they Alaskan fish just happens to be the best. It's because if you think of it, it's cold, pristine, yeah. you know, and it's sustain. It's all sustainable. And they outlawed. They never, from the beginning, allowed fish farming, which was so thoughtful and so huge. I mean, there are rivers in the lower forty-eight in Canada. Once they install all these fish farms, the wild stocks they die out, like like that. Film. I mean, they, they have to swim through it. They get the fish lights. I mean, it just decimates the wild stocks. So, you know, way back, they didn't realize, but mm -hmm. luckily in Alaska, they never allowed farm fish. And so they haven't decimated the stocks. I can't remember where I was going now. Oh yeah. So <laughs> here's the, the cheat code is just look for Alaskan. It usually will say Alaskan, Alaskan equals wild or wild Alaskan. Same thing. Cause all Alaskan is wild. Oh, and okay. that way, you know, it's wild and not farmed. Or it's just, or order from CNSC. Or, or just go to our website and they're all good choices. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> keep, keep it really simple. <laughs> there. Yeah. So CNSC.com, right? Yes. Uh, and that, so from there, they can go ahead and sign up on the newsletter, which is great. I receive it, which you can get yes. the recipes. I love it when people jump on our newsletter because that's kind of where I put a lot of time and energy and we have a lot of, you know, we're there to help you. We're going to give you resources, recipes. I'm there every step of the way. I'll help you just reply to any email and go like, Sina, I don't know which to choose and I'll just walk you through it. So that's a really good place um, to start and then just, yeah, jump on and check it out. I love that you're just this amazing mom, woman, wife that is like doing all this. It's so, I mean, you're running a fishing company. That's so awesome. <laughs> Did you ever it's, think that would happen? Like when you were growing up as a teenager, like I'm going to run a fishing company someday. No, I mean, I would go out on my dad's boat and he was like, do you want me to teach you how to run the boat? Like if you want to be a, a, you know, a fishing boat captain, I was like, 
no thanks. I mean, I want to learn how to run it. I'm not going to run a boat though. Like, mm, nah, nah. and then I went to grad school and I studied fish and I was like, yeah, that's all good. Like I still didn't like, I didn't, I couldn't imagine exactly what I'm doing and it pulls from every piece. Everything I mean, it's, the way that. life works out is fascinating and, and it uh -huh. is not what I ever imagined. And you know, the way that I write about fish and talk about fish. And I would, I wouldn't have thought I could go for 10 years and still have things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you ship just in, in the U S yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just the U S yeah. limited so, to Hawaii and Alaska, but mostly the lower 48, we ship overnight every week. I'm going to miss you when I'm in Portugal. I can't get any. <laughs> Oh, you'll them. have good fish over there, though. <laughs> yeah, there is some good fish over there, too, though. I was telling you about the scabbard fish. You'll have to look it up. It's the scariest fish I've ever seen, but it's so good. Like you said earlier, like the ugliest fish are actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because they're deep, deep water. Yeah. Cold, cold, <laughs> cold, deep water is good for fish. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. I hope everyone listening has learned a lot and you'll take this and and uh and apply it in your life because i mean it's all about being happier and healthier don't we all want to be happier and healthier i do i do <laughs> yeah, I, I ate more fish than a sea fish there you go all right thank you so much everyone have a great day thank you